Hello, my name is Bruce Wilkinson. I'm an instructor here at Sunset Learning Institute. And today I want to spend some time talking about working with UCCE Script Editor, and in particular the formula that we might use to implement certain business requirements for our uh, business units, the, the people that we are scripting for. I want to focus a little bit on a couple of test facilities, namely Call Tracer and RT Test, to just demonstrate the way in which we might test these formula before we put them into uh, a production script. If we look at, in fact, some of the built-in functions that are available to us, we'll see a great many of them, uh, all providing us with one set of facilities or another. In this example, or in this particular demonstration, I want to uh, look at those functions that are going to enable us to deconstruct a string of information that we might uh, have uh, been given via CVP. As you probably are aware, CVP provides that front-end IVR functionality in a UCCE environment. And if we uh, use that front-end to do a database dip, we might return um, a string of information about a particular caller. If, for instance, we look at this particular string, we'll see that uh, the caller, in fact, uh, has entered some information which allows us to then do a database dip and return this particular collection of information. And just going through this particular uh, string, we see that we've got a first and last name, an account number, an account type, status of the account, and the date in which this particular person joined the organization. This would typically come to us in a string uh, of the format listed here, where we have delimiters between the first and last names uh, and between the last name and the rest of the string. This, of course, is necessary because those first and last name fields are of variable lengths, where the remainder of the string uh, is a fixed length. If we look here, we can see a before function that uses the um, facility of saying, uh, I want to return everything that is before the first instance of the character that I uh, define here, which just happens to be the delimiter. So this particular function, this particular string, uh, should return uh, just Dusty, being the first name. If we want to return the last name, it's a little more complex. And recognizing that these expressions work from the inside out, we can evaluate this by looking at the first expression after. Uh, and this is saying, present everything to me after the first instance of this particular character. Well, everything after the first instance of this character is roads, uh, delimiter, and the rest of the string. Once that's returned, the next expression will be executed, and that is the before, and we'll say, now bring me back everything before this particular delimiter character here. Uh, and of course, because these guys have gone now, uh, that's going to return roads. And then lastly, we can look at the left, right expressions to be able to see uh, how we might deconstruct the remainder of the string, returning the account number, the account type, the status, uh, and the date. But we'll explore those um, in a little while as we go further. Firstly, though, to experiment and, uh, and practice these expressions, uh, what I'm going to do is to open up a script editor, which I've got running here on a uh, lab environment, uh, just so that we can see how we might go about creating uh, exactly those formulas and how we might use them uh, to, to, um, to evaluate those expressions. So I'm going to open up a very simple routing script, hardly even worthy of the name, because all I'm going to do that use this for is a test platform uh, in order to test our syntax for these formulas. I'll start this by bringing out a set variable node. And I'm going to use this node to simulate the string that I would get back from CVP in the micro app variable 
caller input. So if I select the call variable, use a micro app caller input, and give its value as So you, know, you can see here the string dusty roads, uh, the delimiter characters being the uh, ampersands, uh, 34567, SLV, D being the account status, 032295 being the um, uh, being the date uh, that this guy joined. Now, in order to test this, even using Call Tracer, we will first need to schedule the script. So again, we'll go to script, call type manager. We will save our script. We won't concern ourselves with any fancy name. Let's just accept the default script three name at this point. And if I open up the schedules tab, I can find a call type that uh, I know exists. Uh, I click add and I'll schedule my script to run against that particular call type. Uh, and now I can test uh, just the setting of this variable uh, by using call tracer and you'll get the idea of what I'm about as we do this. So I'm looking at the uh, dial number 3911 against the routing client CVP. Uh, I'll send the call and the trace tells me that yes in fact we have been able to set that variable caller input equal to the string dusty delimiter roads delimiter 34567 slv being the account uh, type d being the status and 032295 being the date that the, this guy joined or how long he's been a customer so let me now close call tracer and put this script back into edit mode because we will now uh, start to deconstruct uh, this facility. Now I'll just conveniently copy and paste that set variable node. There's no other reason for doing it that way other than convenience. Uh, and now what I'm wanting to do is to set a particular peripheral variable. Let's say we might as well start with PV1. And that's going to be equal to the string or expression that we talked about before. So I can use the formula editor for this function. I'll delete the previous. <clears throat> and I want to go to the built-in functions tab at this point and look at the before function. Paste that in. And now within those parentheses or brackets, I'll type the string that I that I need. So in quotes, the delimiter is the first thing I'm interested in. <clears throat> and it's the delimitation of, now we don't have to type that string um, in its entirety because remember we set that equal to the value of the call, um, uh, caller input field. So I can simply come back here and now scroll down and find the user micro app caller input and paste that in. So if things are working, what we're doing, what we're now uh, saying is that we want to take everything before the first delimit delimiter in the field that is uh, that has or in the uh, the string that is the value of this particular variable. Click OK. And OK again. <clears throat> and save. So yes. 
Now I'll just call Tracer again to see how he went. So again, the same dial number, same routing client, send the call. And you can see here now that, yes, in fact, at, at uh, node 2, we set the variable. We tested that before. But this is indicating a successful execution of our formula insofar as we have returned the value or set the value of peripheral variable 1 equal to the string dusty, which is exactly what we wanted to do. The next thing to do then of, uh, is see if we can bring back roads and place that into a peripheral variable. So we'll just expand our script editor here a little, put it back into edit mode. Bring out another set variable. And in this case, what we will do is set the value of, let's say, peripheral variable 2. And again, use our formula editor. So then in this next variable, uh, that we're wanting to bring out roads. Uh, what we need to do again is go to the built-in function. Uh, and if you uh, might remember, we need to build this, or this, while this will be executed from the inside out, we essentially will be building it from the outside in, which is a little bit strange, but it's the way it is. So we'll start off with our before statement. And the before statement is going to, again, select the ampersand as our delimiter. Uh, but now rather than go straight into the string, uh, we're going to now paste in the after function. And that after function is going to look uh, somewhat similar in that we again want the ampersand. Uh, and then follow that by, uh, by the string. So uh, that string, of course, is going to be the current value of the call user micro app caller input variable. We paste that in and let's just take a look at what we've got here. Um, so before, after, we need a comma there. comma there and I believe that should be okay let's see if it works for us click okay okay so now we can uh, again run our call tracer just to test whether this is going to work we'll put it into monitor mode or browse mode just to save it open up my call tracer and send my call again. Uh, and you can see that uh, at this node 4, peripheral variable 2 has in fact been set to roads. So we've now got a situation where PV1 is equal to dusty, PV2 is equal to roads. We could at this point concatenate uh, uh, PV1 and PV2 uh, to put it into, uh, say, peripheral variable 3. Uh, and present the agent with dusty roads as one field, or we could retain PV1 and PV2. That's entirely up to you uh, and how many variables that you'll be working with. Next thing we need to do then, if I close these, uh, is to look at how we return um, each of those fixed fields. And for that, we'll be using the left-right statements. So to start returning these um, other components of the string, we'll go back into edit mode. We'll bring out yet another set variable.
This time we'll set the variable peripheral variable three. And our formula now will use the left right functions as part of the built in function. So we'll open up that tab, we'll go to the left, we'll paste that. We're not now, we're not uh, in this case talking about any delimiters. So we can, uh, in the immediate uh, left parentheses following the left expression, we'll now click right and paste that guy. And what we are wanting to evaluate, of course, is the uh, variable user micro app caller input. And now, if you'll recall back that there were several uh, um, characters following on from the first and last name and we're wanting to return the um, three four five six seven which is the account number so let's just sort of see how we might uh, go about that so following on from uh, that call it input field um, we, we would need to look at how many characters in we want to take okay so the rightmost uh, 17 characters is what we're looking for there. Um, and then what we're wanting to return uh, is our three, four, or three, four, five, six, seven, the five characters associated with that. So let's just look at how we might do that. And click OK. And OK again. And let's now save our script. And look at call tracer. Send our call. You can see in fact that node five has in fact returned three, four, five, six, seven. And that's now been entered as a value into call peripheral three. So now we've got the ability at least um, without going further to set variable um, one, two, and three to the first and last name of this caller uh, and his account number, which is information that might be, you know, uh, of uh, quite some use to the agent. So hopefully we've seen how we can use call tracer not only to enter those formulas, but to test them conveniently in a script that doesn't go anywhere near our production scripts. Um, and we've so far looked at just some simple approaches to use the left right expressions to bring out our, in this case, uh, our account number. Um, we do have other uh, um, string values, in other words, the account type, the status, and the join date. And what I'd like to do is to now go to the RT test facility uh, and use that facility to explain how we might play. Uh, and test those formula. To facilitate this, I have already got an RDP expression or an RDP connection into my router. And here I will open up a command prompt and uh, run the RT test facility. This is a facility that is available on the router of your UCCE system. So to get to the appropriate directory. I just need to go back a couple of points. Uh, and from this point, I establish the RT test um, utility. So I do that by typing in the string RT test the system is Prager A, which essentially is our host name and you can see from that that it is a, in fact, a progger. Let me correct myself there. Progger A. 
the customer is cus01 and the node that I'm dealing with is router A. So with that syntax, we should bring up our facility, but you can see I've made a mistake there again. So let me just check that. The mistake is here. And RT test uh, is now available. So to utilize RT test, I will go to the expressions utility and now just write in that formula as we've been writing in our script editor. So again, we're going to use the left right utilities. And type in my string. Finishing with the date. Uh, now we want to, again, it's going from the inside out, so the rightmost number of characters I, that I want to extract from here uh, is 17 in this case. And then the leftmost characters uh, of that return string is the first five. Oops. Okay, so if this is correct, and I think it is, let me just check. Because the syntax is quite important. So this is going to first return the left, uh, sorry, the rightmost 17 characters. If we count those, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it will effectively return the remainder of the string outside of dusty roads. The next thing that will be uh, executed is the leftmost five characters of that newly created string, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, hopefully. If we want to execute or have the router execute that expression, we just hit enter. Uh, and the results are presented. So we can pretty easily see how that formula is correct. Now that's the one we created in script editor. Let's uh, see if we can't return uh, something else. Uh, and, this, and in this case, all I need really to do is to change these values. Let's change that to a 12 and that to a three. So what this should now be saying is I first want to return the rightmost 12 characters of this string. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So from the SLV onwards should be returned. Then the left expression should say of that uh, field, please bring me the three leftmost. So again, if everything is correct there, we should see silver. And for some reason, that's not doing that for me. There we go. Uh, and so on. And if we finally wanted to return the uh, eight most, um, uh, the date, um, there's no need for a left right uh, stuff. All we really need to do is to return the rightmost eight characters. So I can just come back and get rid of the entire left. And And read myself of all that. Uh, and there's the date. So uh, there are two methods of uh, building formulas, testing formulas uh, for subsequent inclusion in your script editor. And while we have not sort of gone on with the completion of that, hopefully you can understand that having created uh, and 
populated our peripheral variables with these values, I can then very easily present those uh, to the agent which is what uh, the purpose of this exercise is. So hopefully you've learned something. Uh, our time is up. We will be presenting more of these and uh, as we move along, we'll get into some more complex formulas, uh, functions and variables. So thank you for watching and I hope you've uh, learned something.